Okay, so this is section 1.4, which is building functions from functions. We're going to learn about combining functions algebraically, compositions of functions, and relations and implicitly defined functions. Okay, so example one, defining new functions. So we're going to let f of x equals x cubed and g of x equals the square root of x plus 1. So find the formulas for the functions. So first is f plus g of x. So we would take f of x, which is x cubed, and add g of x, which is square root of x plus 1. Now, if these could be combined, if we had like terms that we could add together, we would simplify, but we can't add a square root to a x cubed, so we are done. Okay. Our next one, we have f minus g of x, so it's going to be x cubed minus the square root of x plus 1. Oh, I forgot. I should go through. We're going to do domain as we go through these. So our domain um, of a, we have to look at, we can't have a negative number underneath the square root, which means we can have 0, so we could have a negative 1 would make that 0 but then we can't have any number that is smaller than negative one. So our domain would be negative one to infinity. And same with part B. Oops, would be negative one to infinity. Okay, then we have F times G. So we have X cubed times the square root of X plus one. Again, I can't simplify that any further. And again, our domain, we just have that square root that we're worried about, can't be less than negative 1. Okay, and our last one is f divided by g of x, so be x cubed over the square root of x plus 1. Now on this one, we have to um, look at the fact that we have a fraction and a square root. So if we think about it, still we have to have numbers greater than, negative, greater than or equal to negative 1, but this time, if we had, if we plugged negative 1 in, it would make us divide by 0, which we can't do. So our domain on this one is going to be just slightly different. We're going to use a curved bracket, negative 1 to infinity, because this time it can't be negative 1, because that would make us divide by 0. Okay, our next example is composing functions. So now we're looking at f of g of x and g of f of x. So we have f of x equals 2 to the x, and g of x equals the square root of x plus 1. So f of g of x means I take the one that's closest, so I take the g of x, and I plug it into f. So what that is going to be, I'm going to write up here, so I'm going to take g of x, I'm going to take the square root of x plus 1, and I'm going to plug it in for the x. So this would be 2 raised to the square root of x plus 1. Okay, and then I'm going to erase this here. So then for the second one, we're going to take f of x and plug it into g. So that would be we're going to take 2 to the x and plug it in right there for the x. So that would be the square root of 2 to the x plus 1. So just to note, f of g and g of f are not the same thing. They are not equivalent to each other. So you can see the differences there. Okay, the next one we're going to talk about is decomposing functions. So um, what this is, is if I have a function like h of x, I want to come up with an f and a g such that f of g of x equals h of x. Okay, that made any sense whatsoever. Okay, so... For this one, I could say, so let's set up my f of x and my g of x. So if I look at this function right here, I could make f of x the square root of x, and I could make g of x x squared plus 5. So that would mean if I plug g of x into f of x, I would end up with h of x. Or... So this is one of those things that we have multiple answers. So let's look at another set of functions that I could come up with. So, or I could say f of x is the square root of x plus 5, and g of x is x squared. Okay? 
So the only the only answer for these that I don't want you to put is saying, although it's these are true, but I want you to be a little bit more creative. So like these are two good ones. Now let's talk about one you don't want to do. Don't do f of x equals x and g of x equals the square root of x squared plus 5. Technically that works. Um, same with the opposite. You could say f of x is the square root of x squared plus 5 and g of x is x. Um, try to be a little bit more creative on these. Okay, so that is it. I think the only other thing, let me go back a minute to um, co composition of functions. So be careful when you are composing functions to look at individual steps to make sure for domain, um, when you're coming up with the domain of compositions. So actually I'm gonna go to a extra slide here. So in the notes we talk about, let's say we have f of x equals x squared minus one and g of x equals the square root of x. So if we talk about g of f of x, that would be the square root of x squared minus one because we're taking g f x squared minus one and plugging it in for x. So then our domain, this one would be a little bit tricky. So the domain, that's why we're talking about it, is um, we can't have a negative underneath the square root sign. So we would say x squared minus one needs to be greater than or equal to zero. So if I solved that, we have a difference of squares on the left. So that means that, or we could say, we could add the one to the other side. So x squared needs to be greater than or equal to one, which means we have x is greater than or equal to one or x is less than or equal to negative one because if we square a negative, it's gonna turn positive. So that means our domain would be negative infinity to negative one with square brackets and then one to infinity. And then real quick, we'll talk about the other way. So we have f of g of x would be the square root of x squared minus one. Well, now we know we can simplify square root squared is just gonna be x minus one. So our final answer there, it looks like our domain would be all real numbers because this right here, x minus one, we can plug in any number we want. However, we have to account for the fact that we used x squared, so, sorry, the square root of x in our um, process to get there. So that means that the domain is zero to infinity. Okay, so let me know if there are any questions.